it is my great honor to be invited to uh, this very important conference. Also, I would like to thank organizers, UNU, WIDA, um, for this excellent uh, opportunity to discuss um, on industrial strategy <coughs> and economic transformation. Um, Okay. In my opinion, <clears throat> the agenda of economic transformation and industrial development strategy are very different among countries because of different endowment and different development phases. For example, we can um, make a kind of typological approach uh, first of all, we need to distinguish between resource poor and resource rich countries, and then what phase of development, then agenda of industrial, industrial policy or industrial development policy and transformation agenda it could be very different. Uh, and let me first talking about that there are two types of dynamic change of endowments. First one is incremental or gradual especially accumulation of knowledge and capabilities. And the second one is much more drastic, especially caused by infrastructure, technological innovation, etc. All, all of them produce new industries, which produce really uh, important economic transformation. Uh, we have many, a lot of literature, and the previous uh, session in which uh, uh, John Page and Roderick uh, explained. Uh, and in other sessions, we have already discussed a lot of um, these aspects. So I directly go to the, my, the main objective of this, of this presentation. I would like to obtain insights into how the crucial factors interact, interact in the field, in practice, focusing on several outstanding cases of what we term industrial policy, which resulted in a remarkable economic transformation. Really remarkable that uh, with that transformation, countries upgraded, developed very fast. Uh, and so research question is how that transformation was triggered and how factor endowments dynamically changed, how accumulation of knowledge and capability was achieved, what kind of drivers kept the momentum of change, momentum of transformation, and what kind of strategy or vision was behind. This is the definition of triggers, uh, readiness or preparedness and drivers. This is an analytical perspective which I have uh, in my mind to make analysis on comparative analysis. There, very often, some drastic change of endowments start the transformation. These we consider triggers. And then we find that there, are, there was readiness or preparedness because of incremental change has already, already there. And with triggers, these endowments responded for transformation. But there are also driving forces to keep momentum of development. And behind, there is a strategy of industrial development and awareness of challenges or leadership. These are the examples of what I am talking about. So let me start with Bangladesh garment industry uh, from agrarian and early industrialization phase. Most important point was that rural development and mobilization of female workers have been crucial. In 1981, 10 years after Bangladesh achieved independence, raw jute and jute goods were its major exports, corresponding to 68%. 2011, only 30 years, garments and textiles constituted 85% of total exports. Today, garment industry has 5,000 to 6,000 factories with 7 to 8 million workers. 
The, this Bangladesh success story is remarkable. Transformation is remarkable because as a recent World Bank study highlighted, the country, Bangladesh, was often held out in the development literature as a hopeless case. Well, how change of environment uh, happened? Rural roads, irrigation, market facilities, other rural infrastructure, microcredit, as we know very well, school education and so forth, uh, central and local governments and donors all together enabled the remarkable agriculture and rural development. And on the basis of these changes of rural society, uh, there was accumulation of uh, capabilities. This is the uh, very uh, synthesized uh, map of what happened. Uh, all, everything started with this Deshu Dai, Dai Wu collaboration. Uh, it is a very famous story. But we need to remember that there was also infrastructure, connectivity, and economic processing zones or industrial zones. And also there was uh, these, these are the infrastructures. Uh, I would like to just uh, skip several. Well, you, you see this uh, infrastructure uh, that enabled the connectivity between Dhaka and Chittagong. Chittagong are the export port. Uh, unfortunately, there was a very big accident. But generally speaking, this process was very successful. And how this change of endowments was possible. First economic processing zone was constructed in 1983. Construction of Meghna Bridge was 1991 and other bridges. All these infrastructure made, facilitated the process. This is the uh, map between Dhaka and Chittagong. Second case is Thai automobile industry, now called Detroit of Asia. Uh, accumulation and knowledge, uh, of knowledge and capability have been essential also in this case for establishing competitive supporting industries. And without supporting industry, assembler cannot uh, establish its competitiveness. Automakers and part suppliers enhanced their competitiveness when they were agglomerated as a cluster with articulated trade, trade, value, trade change, value change, excuse me, value change. And at the same time, I would like to emphasize that rapid expansion of Thailand's automobile production was triggered by an infrastructure called Eastern Seaboard. Today, production, well, two, uh, seven years ago, the production was one million cars. Today, 2.5 million cars. 640 first layered parts maker and one 1,700 second and third layered part makers. Uh, it's a very large industry. It is not, it's a kind of a cluster of industries with supporting small and medium industries. This is also the uh, very uh, um, summary of what happened. Here, this eastern seaboard triggered uh, and accelerated the process of development. What is very interesting in the case of Thailand that Thailand started with pickup truck, not, uh, not uh, passenger cars. It was very, very inter interesting uh, decision. And also Thailand government started to uh, establish supporting industries. That is very different from the cases of other countries. And supporting industries may facilitated the uh, foreign direct investment of car assemblers. Uh, so this is a package of infrastructure, uh, accumulation of knowledge in supporting industries, formation of clusters, and competitiveness. Uh, so I'd like to emphasize the importance of Eastern Seaboard. But as because of time constraints, I just skip. This is the main, it was the original part of uh, Thai automobile industry. This yellow part is Eastern Seaboard. Without Eastern Seaboard, I think the uh, 
establishment of Detroit of Asia could have been much more difficult. You, you see Eastern Seaboard Industrial Estate. There are many industrial estates like this. Third case is Brazilian Cerrado Miracle, Miracle of Cerrado. It is a very large, vast uh, land which was not used. This Cerrado. Cerrado is a kind of tropical savanna uh, in Brazil. Uh, Cerrado is called, uh, in Brazil, tropical savanna is called Cerrado. It is very big, uh, very, very vast region. And um, Brazilian Agriculture Research Corporation called Embrapa uh, made big contribution through soil improvement and breeding improvement of soybeans and other crops. In 1980, after seven years of continuous effort, first soybean variety was completed for cultivation in the Cerrado. Soybean was not only important, important for the main, as main crop in this area, but also soybean was important for soil improvement itself in the Cerrado. Cerrado soil was so infertile so too acid and a lot of aluminum, and it was necessary to uh, fix the nitrogen with soybean and change or to make much more fertile the soil of Cerrado. Cerrado was like this, and still there are large area like this, and today the development of Cerrado, uh, we, see, we have this, this scenery. Economist of London called Miracle of Cerrado. Former President Lula, Ignacio Lula, Agricultural Revolution of Brazil. World Food Prize was given to those who started Minister Alison Paulinelli of Brazil. And uh, Norman Borog said this was the, one of the great achievements of agricultural science in the 20th century. It is the first successful case in human history of, history of rain-fed large-scale grain production in tropical region. It is rain-fed. There are um, cases of irrigated land, but irrigated land is exceptional. Uh, main part of Cerrado crop production is rain-fed. This is, uh, again, uh, very simplified version of what happened from the uh, small scale, uh, sm uh, pilot scale, uh, we must start with small, uh, small one, scaled up from uh, pilot project to full-fledged full project, going to frontiers. These are the 21 uh, places where the, this project was implemented. And today, these, these places are converted into a hub of clusters of Cerrado, or value chain of Cerrado. This is, uh, you see, this, this is Cerrado. And this is the amplified map of Cerrado. The green one is improved pasture land. Red one is crop land. And white one, white part, is natural vegetation without human intervention. So there are only 10% of Cerrado is used for, cross, uh, for crop. Uh, 2000, this is a map made by, made, uh, based on the uh, Landsat image analysis. Uh, so at that moment, 60% of Cerrado was still natural. The most important thing is the uh, value chain development, employment, uh, because we had very competitive crop production in Cerrado. I totally agree with Dr. Hindin when you say that agribusiness and any other industry need to start with very competitive input, because input is give the spill of our externality to the value chain uh, related to that product, to that input. 
in the case of Cerrado, uh, large amount of employment, that, uh, the, these are the numbers of employment from through the value chain. Uh, soybean is used for as animal feed, and animal feed, uh, with animal feed, large amount of production of broilers, pork, and um, milk. And all these are processed. So Brazilian export get diversified with more processed products. And this value chain is supported by these institutions. So there are a large amount of migration to Cerrado region because of employment increase. This is the map. This is the one of the hub of Cerrado development, Lucas do Rio Verde. Uh, this is the analysis of the, yeah. Fourth case is Chilean salmon industry. In Chile, there was no salmon, but um, it was started with salmon eggs brought from Japan. Today, Chile and Norway are two largest exporter in the world. Uh, from zero, how it was uh, developed, the uh, technology, how the technology was disseminated. Uh, Fundacion Chile, Chile Foundation, was very important because well, this, this Fundacion Chile uh, is the um, public private entity which uh, supported the establishment of salmon industry, private companies. And technologically, JICA and Chilean government uh, technological cooperation supported during 20 years. This is the, uh, what was going on. The hatchery, hatcheries, uh, and this is analysis. And finally, today, it is very modern process, very com com uh, automatically uh, fitted by computers. Fifth case is Singapore's approach to economic transformation. In case of Singapore, they had very interesting strategy, but uh, particularly not uh, targeting, but cross-cutting industrial strategy from cheap labor-based manufacturing to technology and high-skilled high labor-based exports. Uh, Singapore was, well, still is a country without natural resources, and when it, when it got the independence, there was a large number of unemployed. So Economic Development Board accomplished, uh, I have to yeah, st stop. Yeah, I think it's better to uh, go through. The, this case is very interesting. This is uh, industrial estates of Singapore. Uh, there are uh, very interesting institutional development and also introduction of uh, 5S or quality management in Singapore. Concluding remarks, I finish in one minute. <laughs> Accumulation of capabilities for years of effort and learning by doing is generally essential for successful industrial strategy. Without this kind of accumulation, it is very difficult to start from zero. But on the other hand, government often with other actors could trigger transformation process by investment in infrastructure, technological innovation or institutional innovation with rapid and drastic change of factor and domains. On the other hand, once trans transformation started, drivers, private sector, investors, both local and foreign, increasing demand, etc., are necessary to keep the momentum of transformation. I think the government initiative and independent public institutions are very important. And particularly the case of public in institutions, we need that these institutions get insulated from the day-to-day -day political changes. Uh, well, so this is, this is a kind of suggestion from strategy to policies and practice. Uh, these are the lessons from all these outstanding cases. Thank you very much for your attention.